So I've got these two slimline LED light panels. They're really good. They're, but they're 60 watt jobs. They're basically the brightest lights I've got here in the lab. And I was thinking, the plan was to put them on this wall here, uh, two of them, so that it would light up my face when I'm sitting here on the stool. You know, how my camera's mainly here pretty much when I'm shooting the talking head version of the blog. I'm sitting here and really, you know, I'm not getting much light. So there's shadows cast and all that sort of thing. But these are, you know, um, 60 watt input rated uh, light panels. So I was thinking they're probably, you know, I can't have them super bright on the wall here. Let's ramp this one up in brightness. And they're, to go up to maximum brightness, these things are blinding. And to have two of them in my face, I think it's a bit of a waste actually. Now, they are 1200 millimeters by 300 millimeters, which means they're actually designed to go in the ceilings. They're the same size as the tiles in the existing troughs. The standard trough is 1200 by 300 as well. So they should, in theory, just slide in. And I think that's why they have like this ridge around the side there so that they can sit on the metal brackets up there. So I thought, well, you know, instead of putting them on the wall panel, I thought, why not just cut a tile out in the roof, cut half a tile and install them up there. So I will get light coming at least down here like this. So I'll sort of get the infill at an angle in my face like that, but it'll also light up the bench as well and this whole area. That's the plan. Give it a go. Just take a quick light reading here. It's currently about 150 lux in the corner here, which isn't much at all. I mean, when I installed the new LED lights on the bench here, 470, no problems at all, but it really drops, you know, in the center here, 300, and then really over here, you know, 150 in the corner. So I reckon if I at least whack one up there, it should give a whole lot of extra light over this area. I don't think I'll give up my day job. I broke one. <laughs> Wah. <laughs> that'll be the cut. That'll be the uh, side I cut out. So the idea, get a Stanley knife probably. They should just cut with a Stanley knife, hopefully, um, down the center. And that will give me a uh, 300 millimeter tile to uh, fit in there. Hmm. And if you haven't seen up inside one of these uh, office crawl spaces in these commercial buildings, let's have a look. I don't think the light's terrific up here. Oh, actually, it's pretty good. There we go. Ta-da! This is what these crawl spaces look like. It's probably, I don't know, three foot high, maybe. You can see all the huge power wiring there, the air conditioning ducts and the uh, troughs of course the light troughs in there well there's here's one of the outlets that's one of the aircon outlets over there you can see all the way through to the other offices in there all the phone cabling up the top um that's all there it is telecom international telephone cable 0.5 millimeter i think that oh, that's a 20 pair cable and uh as you can see, here's the troughs. These troughs just sit in these uh, metal brackets along here. So they're all, these are uh, a uh, drop ceiling, I believe they call them. Sorry if I'm getting the terminology wrong. I'm not in the building trade. But they're basically, you know, there's a flat, there's a floor up the top here, which is metal. And they, these ceilings are effectively hanging ceilings. And they just hang down on these metal Bracket. So um, you can't really walk on these, I don't think. So I don't, you know, um, you, would ne you wouldn't want to uh, go up there and crawl around. So that's the corridor across there. You can see right over to the other offices. So if you can get into one office, it's actually not hard to uh, crawl into another one. You just remove the tile and uh, hop over the wall. And if you're wondering what that red cable is there, that's um, 
the fire alarm sensor wiring. I've got one a fire alarm sensor there and uh, another one over there as well in my little cubicle space and there's quite a mess of wires all over there because my office here has uh, eight phone outlets in it go figure so and um, they install of course these power points for the lights just a regular uh, power points so that when they wire up the build when they wire up the building and electrician comes in licensed electrician wires up all these uh, power points there you go you can see them there and then the uh, lower paid uh, building builders are allowed to come in who aren't electricians and install all the lighting because there's existing approved power points there and uh, so that's how you can get cheaper building labour to install all your lights and stuff. So now I'm going to put this panel up here and uh, I can plug it in and trial it out before I do anything too permanent. Because <laughs> once I cut the tiles and stuff, you know, you've got to be pretty sure of what you're doing. So, disconnect the power plug for a minute. Let's try that. I think it should just fit. They are... Oh, there's just it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Beautiful. That fits perfectly. And I should be able to plug that in. There we go. Ta-da! So that's on low at the moment. Let's uh, ramp that up. And that's... I think that's pretty close to full. It's pretty cool being able to remote control your uh, lights. And I can program that in by holding down the, there we go, so if I switch it off, it should now come back on at the full mark. Beautiful. So you can program in the intensity that comes on at, and that's really quite nice. I like that. Where's my light meter? Now we're talking 250 in the corner, and 600. No, 490, oh, a bit of a shadow there, 500, 600. Wow, that's actually, there's a, I go like six inches on my bench and there's a difference between 500 and 600. Probably because I'm right under a, one of my new spotlights there perhaps. Anyway, 700 there. So that should be good for a front-on blog. Let's give it a try. All right, I'm dual wielding remotes now. I've got the remote for the new light up there. And I've got my remote for the camera. I can zoom in, hey, set to slow zoom at the moment, but zoom out. So let me set the, uh, let me set the fixed exposure so the exposure won't change with the light level. So this is fixed exposure. This is with the light on. And if you can probably see like the shadow over here, because there's no lights basically on this wall. I'm relying on the light bouncing off the white wall and coming back to light up sort of this side of me. You'll notice this side's a lot brighter. And uh, let's switch, so this is on, full brightness. Let's switch it off. There we go. Yeah, brighter is, on is a lot better, is it not? There's, and this is what I've been shooting with um, up until now. This. Um, get it back to front on the camera, this uh, bright side over here, and this evens it up a bit more, I think. And the wall behind me is uh, not as dark either. There we go. I think that is a winner. And that should help with the focus stuff as well, autofocus and manual focus with the depth of field stuff. Sometimes I get it slightly out of focus because my camera is so good that it can do that. It can get that depth of field stuff. So now, hopefully, I can um, increase the 
um, f-stop on the thing permanently and that will give me a uh, deeper depth of field and things will stay in focus better. It's the plan anyway. So that's really, I think that's a good improvement. Better than on the wall. I think the wall would have been, because I'd be staring at it, I'd be squinting, wouldn't be that good at all. So I rather like that. I've got an extra panel here and uh, I'm deciding if the problem is, I'll show you. Here we go, let's have a look. There's my, there's my T-shirts hanging there, by the way. Um, so I've got the light there at the moment. Let's turn auto exposure off. There we go. So it compensates for that. So the problem is this is only like a half panel. So I'd have to measure that to see if it would fit in there next to it. But if it does, I think I could probably take out that tile as well and, uh, and put it in there so it would uh, light up even more. I think it's going to be a winner. So let's measure this. I think it's, uh, no, no, it's not going to fit. Bummer. Although, no, it might fit on top and then go over. No, it's not. No, the pillar, of course, goes all the way up. Silly me. So the only other option would be this tile here. But uh, the problem with that is um, but it's a little bit closer to here, so it's not going to light up the face as much, but that might be my best option, because I really need sort of more light on this side here coming down, so that could, that could help. I think I might go for it. Now that's really some serious light in this corner now, but you can see, possibly on camera, you can see it strobing, see it strobing against the white wall there. So, very concerned about that. And uh, there we go. Boom. But let's get the light meter out. Oh. <laughs> 800, 820 lux. That's insane. On the bench is now 800. 850, 900, 930. 1,000 right here. 1,000 lux on the bench. Oh, beauty. And here it is. Look at it. Woohoo! It's lighting up all this side. It's bouncing off the wall beautifully. And if I switch it up, oh, hang on. Fixed. There we go. We've got uh, fixed exposure on the camera and turn off, turn off. It's not turning off. Crap battery, hang on. Yeah, heap of crap. Yeah. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> anyway, this is, if I turn the auto exposure back on, the camera will now compensate for the darkness, of course, because this has got a really good low light sensor, it can go down to, you know, really low amounts of lux and still gain up the uh, light and still look quite reasonable. But you can see that this is really lit up here because there's nothing bouncing off this wall. So um, if I switch it on, woo, overexposure there for a second. Whoa, my eyes have to adjust. It's a massive amount of light. But uh, there you go. I like it. Now, of course, one of the issues is I can see strobing on the LCD, so I don't know if that's going to show up on camera or not. I have to load the video file into the computer and have a look, see if it shows up there, but definitely see the strobing lines. And aha, it turns out I didn't have one of them on full brightness, and now there's no strobing that I can see on the LCD at all. So I turned them up to max, and of course, um, there's no PWM. You put on maximum, and it's no longer, you know, PWM in those LEDs. No pulse width modulation, therefore, no flicker. Constantly on. Beauty. And if we look at the Lux, oh, we've got 1,000, 1,100 Lux in the corner. 1,100, there it is. Do you believe it? Well, yeah, at one point, yeah, my camera was blocking. Look at that, 1,200 lux under these lights. 1,400, 1,500 on the bench. You know, 900, 
No, oh, I'm probably blocking. Yeah. Ah, oh, thousand. Oh man. Woo. And if I play around with the focus here, on, you'll see the back of the board there is now in focus, and the front is out of focus. This is an example of shallow depth of field, and the front of the board is in focus, and the rear of the board is out of focus. And really, that's undesirable, really, for this kind of board. It's, uh, that's manual, it's gonna go back to automatic there. It's just moving back. I wasn't actually in manual mode there. I was doing manual override with automatic. But uh, let's try and set a uh, fixed f-stop and see what happens. Okay, now that's at an aperture setting of f2.8. And as you can see, the rear end of the board is pretty much um, out of focus. Now it's in focus, but if I put the front in focus, the rear goes out of focus. That's because it's a low aperture value. Let me increase that now and see if we can get the depth of field to inc include the whole board. And there you go, that's an aperture value of f4. So now the front and the rear of the board is completely in focus. And if I, I can make the rear out, slightly out of focus again by doing some adjusting my manual adjust ring there, but pretty much it's going to auto pretty much back to get that entire board in there. Now that's at f5.2 and as you can see it's significantly darker but because I've got a good low light sensor of course it is able to handle that with very little noise but I think we'll still see some noise if we go right up to f8 or thereabouts. And there you go that's the maximum value of f8 and you can see the noise coming in and I've done a video on this uh, previously or is included as a subset in another video and uh, this is much better now because I've got much more light in here. So I can probably leave the camera permanently set to f4 aperture or thereabouts so I get a greater depth of field and I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, in getting things in and out of focus nearly as much as I normally do. Let's try a little test here. I've got uh, my Electronics uh, Australia magazine, old one there, September 1986, cost $5.50 back in those days. And um, it's about uh, 40, 50, uh, 50 centimetres away from the camera there. And I'm at f4.0. And let's bring a board in here instantly. And you'll see that the autofocus is, you know, it's, you'll see that behind it as well, trying to, focus this and the background there. The background is out of focus now and you'll notice the time it takes to go from that to that with f4.0. Let's try f2.8. And here we are, we're now at f2.8. Let's give it a try. Bring it in. You'll notice it probably takes a bit longer to lock in on that board and it should be more out of focus the magazine in the background there. So we take it away and it should take longer to come back in because it's got further to go than if we were at a higher aperture value. That's the theory anyway, I think. So there you have it. Thanks to Doug at Doug Ford Analog Design, I've got some really sweet ass lights in here. Well over a thousand lux on the bench. Oh man, that's just, it's brilliant. No pun intended. Catch you next time.